What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with my post fight, Deontay Wilder, the Bronze Bomber versus Chris Ariola. Now, that was a fight that capped off PBC, and it was, it was solid. It wasn't uh, Wilder's best performance, but there is a solid reason that was later revealed. I want to give my thoughts the good, the bad, and the ugly. I think Wilder definitely dominated the fight, did what he had to do to win. Chris Ariola, it, it's not, I'm not going to really go all round by round because it was a dominant performance by Wilder and I don't think I, I didn't do an actual physical scorecard but I wouldn't have really given Chris Ariola any type of rounds that I can remember but early on the thing I liked about Chris Ariola is he, he was he knew this was his last big opportunity to impress and you know what I mean he's had some shaky performances like the Kasi performance and stuff like that and through a fluke with the Povetkin fight falling through with the Meldonium scandal or situation he was placed in this position so a lot of people said oh Ariola, he doesn't deserve the position or whatever but he's a name Deontay Wilder had a training camp so the fight fell apart or came together I guess you could say when the other fight fell apart so it's really no different than Gennady Golovkin and people are trying to say oh the Kill Brook fight happened as a result of Chris Eubanks and Eubanks Sr. wanting operational control and that fight falling apart so I mean what's the difference so Chris Ariola got the shot and he knew that he knew this was his possibly his last hurrah at a main event and a title shot and stuff like that he's throwing this opportunity so it looked like he was coming out to try to win and come out smart he was kept a high guard he was circling to the right so he can stay away from that power right that Deontay Wilder has but through the course of the fight that wasn't good enough Deontay Wilder far more athletic just bigger bigger puncher and there was moments in this where Chris Ariola looked like he was in really really bad shape he was getting buckled and um, as soon as Wilder opened up it was almost trouble now the bad and the ugly let me talk about this this is actually what's what's the bad and the ugly actually makes Wilder exciting in my opinion but just from a technical breakdown and standpoint Wilder does some things in there like some showboating and showmanship very dangerous stuff what he's doing like sometimes he backs straight up has his hands in the air he was on the ropes and he was by the turnbuckle and he's with an inside fighter whose only shot to really win is through an inside fight a guy with some power you know what I mean Chris Ola has power I don't know how much power he had in those mid rounds after being hurt but in general he has a solid KO percentage he knocked out Eric Molina before Wilder knocked him out things of that sort so very dangerous cat and mouse game that Wilder plays he did it with Spilka where one, he's six foot seven, but he's like lowering his head and not really fighting tall per se. And he's kind of getting lower and putting his head in, in a lower position for the shorter fighter. Or when he's on the rope, he's like, he was dancing. He literally started dancing, like almost sal like salsa dancing, rotating his hips. And Chris Ariola's like head was pointed down. But if he would have landed, like if he, if Chris Ariola would have landed one of them unorthodox Madonna style punches, then who knows? It could be, it could be trouble. So the, the better your competition, you, I think Wilder needs to watch out for stuff like that. Like the showboating. I wouldn't necessarily do some of those things that he was doing that made the fight entertaining for his hometown crowd. I wouldn't really do that against Alexander Povetkin because we all know Povetkin can crack. He has power. He's a stocky inside fighter. And really, he's going to be desperate trying to get on the inside. So you're, you're actually giving him his best opportunity to score the upset if it would be. I think it should be upset because Wilder is the champion and he's the bigger guy. Um, so that's the only, I think, there's little technical flaws that Wilder does that makes him exciting but it also makes him a little bit vulnerable just nobody has been able to capitalize fully off of it because of the other things he's doing right because of that nasty right hand another good thing for Deontay Wilder his jab is money and I told people about this a lot of people back in the day were talking about Klitschko before he lost to Tyson Fury I said Wilder could give Klitschko a lot of problems now the biggest test for that would be if Klitschko could or Wilder could deal with Klitschko's power if, if Klitschko lands. But you've seen that in Tyson Fury fight. And I said this before that. The thing is, Tyson Fury is used to, or excuse me, not Tyson Fury, Vladimir Klitschko. He's used to fighting smaller guys. You know what I mean? Guys who are Alexander Povetkin, Height, and Manuel Char, and stuff like that. Wilder's big, athletic, and can crack. And you, you've seen that. And Wilder, as you guys can see, is a lot more aggressive than Tyson Fury. So I'm not saying 100% he would beat Klitschko. But it's definitely a possibility because Klitschko doesn't have the best chin either. And a lot of people question Wilder's chin. But 
we've seen Klitschko knocked out. We haven't seen Wilder knocked out as a professional. Um, I like Wilder's jab, his athleticism. His, he has pretty good timing, especially for a big man, for a heavyweight. Like when he was doing all the showboating and on the turnbuckle and dancing and stuff, all of a sudden he ripped a nasty uppercut, which was a, for considering how long his arms are, that might be a hard punch to get off in that span of time. And he was able to do it. And actually he was buckling Chris Ariola throughout the fight. Now, initially I was saying that when it ended, it ended, I think it was the seventh round. The, the corner just didn't, they called it off. Like they, they didn't want to see no more because Chris Ariola really didn't have no shot. He was trying to, sh the, Chris Ariola, he always shows heart, but he was being slaughtered in there. You know what I mean? He was outmatched. He wasn't winning. He was game. His eye was swelling at a rapid pace, so he couldn't see. So it, it was really, it was inevitable. So before the eighth round started, he got the TKO. Or after the eighth round, I forget which one it was. So that was a rightful stoppage to me. Chris Ariola showed mad heart like he always does, but it looks like his best days are, are behind him. I like I like the another good thing was the sportsmanship between the two fighters at the end. Um, one thing I did notice, I was thinking in my head, I was like, Wilder's normally a really good finisher. So I was like, maybe he's just friends with Chris Ariola, like because there was no massive trash talking, because it looked like he was carrying Chris Ariola, meaning. He looked like he could have got him up out of there, but he wasn't going full throttle. And I didn't know why that was. Earlier in the fight when he walked out, he had this like, it looked like road rash, like he got a motorcycle accident or had like a laser surgery or tattoo. It just looked like a scabbing on his arm. So I didn't know what that was. They never really talked about it on the telecast. So I didn't know if his arm was bothering him. I don't know if he was just friends and was showing mercy to Chris Ariola because they were kind of cordial to each other. You know what I mean? And then it was later revealed post-fight that he broke his hand during the fight and he was forced to fight with the broken hand. So really there's nothing to, in my opinion, that people shouldn't like about Wilder. Yes, early in his career, he wasn't fighting the best names, you know what I mean? The Jason Gavern or whatever, those types of people. But he provides entertainment. He's a showman. He knows how to sell the fight. He's a champion. He's putting on a show. He's calling out people. Post-fight, he said, I want the best. I want the belts. I want to unify Tyson Fury, the Joshuas. But the question is, do they want me? And I'm telling you right now, a lot of people don't know shit about boxing. Those are good fights. Tyson Fury or Joshua would be a great fight for Deontay Wilder. And I'm not making a prediction, but if you think Joshua's just going to go out there and mow him down in the first round, I, I really don't see that at this level. Maybe if Joshua just keeps growing and getting experience he becomes more dangerous but at right now if he were to fight wilder very dangerous fight i mean granted i don't know if wilder would take some of the risks that he does with like a spilka or like a chris Ariola, like the dancing and the showmanship because if he does something like that then who knows because aj is all business but if he's fighting the smart fight like he did with bermain Severn, where he can't really clown around as much and stuff like that then that's a very dangerous fight for Anthony Joshua right now. Power versus power. I mean, obviously, if one person lands first, it could be the end of the night. But based on the athleticism, that that stick, pause, that jab that Deontay Wilder has, Joshua's never seen nothing like that. Like, where whereas a guy has that much power like Wilder, and he is athletic and a good jab. You know what I mean? Like that. And is going to keep it in front of you. Wilder's good and arguably fights better off the back foot. We haven't really seen that. We've seen... Joshua in there with some punchers like let's say a Dillian White who I mean beat him in the amateurs knocked him down that's cool but really wasn't tested tested as a professional like he wasn't fighting the best names in in America you know what I mean the Andy Ruiz's or anything like that not saying he can't beat them but he hasn't proven that yet but Dillian White former kickboxing champion or MMA fighter or whatever he was um, he's more of an offensive come forward fighter whereas Wilder would He's he good he fight off the back foot and he's athletic with that monstrous power. So great fight. Hopefully Joshua takes him up on his offer and Eddie Hearn or we see Tyson Fury, Klitschko winner, fight a Wilder. I mean, we need unifications. The heavyweight division's back, but there's really nothing to like. If you like guys like Gennady Golovkin and, you know, me like him for his power. I mean, Deontay Wilder provides a lot of the same thing. The only thing I would say is Golovkin is better with his offensive technique. It's more polished and Wilder sometimes he can get reckless or start feeling himself a little bit more but i mean in his defense 
his knockouts are more brutal than Gennady Golovkin's. And that's just my honest opinion. Like, people look crucified and and paralyzed and stuff. Eyes rolling in the back of their head type of stuff. So, they're both good fighters. But Wilder is a showman, so what's there not to like? You know what I mean? He's calling out the people, fighting with broken hands, showing he's a warrior. And it is what it is. He's a champion. Drop it in the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought. Wilder, Areola. Wilder says he broke his hand. It was a solid fight. On to the next one. Maybe Povetkin will be later, depending on what the outcome is and whatever's ruled with the WBC and VADA and that whole mess. Drop it in the comment section. Share the video. Like the video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video, is Ego signing off.